In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to build a basic calculator in C. We're basically gonna build a little program where the user can enter in two numbers, and then our program will take those two numbers, add them together, and spit out the answer. So this is gonna be kinda of cool, and we'll also learn about getting numbers as input from a user. So over here, I wanna show you guys exactly how we can do this. The first thing I wanna do is print out a prompt. So I basically wanna prompt the user for some input. So over here, I can just say print F, and inside of here, we're just gonna give them a little prompt. So I'll say enter first number, and essentially what we're gonna have them do is enter in two numbers. So I'm actually gonna create two variables up here. So we'll make an int and we'll call it num1, and then we'll make another int and we'll call it num2. And I'm not actually gonna give these values right up front. We're gonna end up giving these whatever the user enters in. So after the user enters the first number, we need to actually grab that number. So I can use another C function called scanf, and in here, we're basically just gonna say percent %d because we wanna grab an integer. And then over here, I'm going to say the name of the variable where I wanna store the value that gets entered. Now, if you're following along with this course, in the last tutorial, we were able to get a string of characters as input from the user. And basically we just typed in like the name of the variable. But when we're getting input that's not a string of characters, in other words, when we're getting input that's not percent %s, so if it's like percent %d or percent %f or percent %c, so if it's like a, a decimal or an integer or a float or a character, we actually need to use a special symbol, this ampersand. So I'm gonna have to say ampersand and then the name of the variable where I wanna store this value. So I'm just gonna say ampersand one. And basically what this means is we're accessing the address of num1, and we're gonna talk about addresses and pointers in a future video, but for now just know that you need this ampersand here in order to store the value that gets entered inside of this variable. So once we do that, now we can move on, and we're basically just gonna do the same exact thing but for the second number. So I'm gonna copy these, and I'll paste this, and now instead of saying enter first number, we'll say enter second number, and we're just gonna store this inside of num2. All right, so once we're done with this, the last thing we wanna do is add them together and print out the answer. So I'm just gonna come down here, I'm gonna say print f, and we'll just say answer, and over here we'll print out the answer. So it's gonna be an integer, and we're basically just gonna print out num1 plus num2. So we're gonna print out the value of num1 plus num2. So we have our basic calculator, we're getting the first number, we're getting the second number, we're storing them inside of these variables, we're adding them together and printing them out. Let's try to run our calculator. So I'm gonna run my program, and you'll see over here it says enter first number, so let's go ahead and enter a six. Enter second number, we'll enter a eight, and now we're gonna get 14. So 14 is the correct answer. So our program worked, it was able to add the numbers correctly and everything's awesome. But let me show you guys one problem with this program. If I wanted to do math on multiple on decimal numbers, for example, if I said two, and then over here I said like 6.8, when I add these together, we're not gonna get the correct answer. We're gonna get six plus two, which is gonna be an integer eight, but we're not gonna get 8.8. .8. So we're not getting the correct value. So instead of letting the user enter in only integers, why don't we instead let them enter in doubles? So over here, I'm gonna change these to double. So I'm gonna say num1 is gonna be a double, num2 is gonna be a double. And since we're getting doubles as input, we're gonna to have to come down here and modify these. So right now, this is accepting an integer, but we wanna make this accept a double. So normally, if we're using printf and we wanted to print out a double, we would say f, and that stands for like floating point number. But when we're scanning for a number, if we wanna use a double, we have to say LF, just like that. So down here, I'm also gonna say LF, and we'll change this to just F. So printf is a little bit different than scanf, right? In scanf, if we wanna accept a double as input, we need to use LF. In printf, we just use percent %f. So let's run our program now, and we should be able to add floating point numbers. So decimal numbers, over here we'll do 4.5, plus 6.7, and we get 11.2. So that looks good to me. It looks like everything's working properly. And now we have a basic calculator, so the user can enter in any numbers that they want, 
and the calculator will be able to handle them. Now, this calculator is not like 100% ironclad secure. Uh, for example, like if I was to come up here and enter in like a string of characters instead of a number, you'll see that it's gonna break the program, right? So it's just like not doing what we wanted it to do. And as we go further in this course, we're gonna learn all sorts of ways that we can check to see if certain things are getting entered correctly and we could basically mitigate circumstances like that. But for now, this is just kind of an introduction into how we can get numbers as input and do things like addition or multiplication once we have them. In this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about building a little game in C. More specifically, we're gonna be building a Mad Libs game. Now, if you've ever played the game Mad Libs, it's basically a game where you write down a bunch of random words. So it could be like, you know, nouns or verbs or someone's name or, you know, a verb ending in ing, something like that. You take all of those words that you enter in and you kind of sprinkle them in into a story. And then generally the story is like kind of funny because it has all these random words in it. So actually, if we head over to my web browser, you'll see I have a picture of a Mad Lib up here. And basically you would just add in a bunch of random words into the story and then you'd read the story back and it could be kind of funny. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can build something like that in C. And we're also gonna talk about some more ways that we can use that scan F function that I showed you guys in the last tutorial. So over here we have um, a little story that I printed out. It just uh, says roses are red, violets are blue, I love you. Kind of like a classic poem. But I think this poem would be a lot funnier if we turned it into a Mad Lib. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna replace roses are red. I'm gonna replace red with a random color. So we're just gonna have the user enter in a color. I'll replace violets with a plural noun. So we're gonna have them enter in a plural noun. And I'm gonna have, instead of saying I love you, we're gonna say I love and then a specific celebrity. So I'll just type in celebrity right there. All right. so. This is basically what we're gonna be printing out. We're gonna be printing out roses are, and then whatever color they enter in, uh, plural nouns are blue, and then I love whatever celebrity. So let's talk about actually creating this program. So we're actually gonna to need to do a couple things. Uh, and actually the first thing I wanna do is I wanna create variables. We're gonna create variables to store the color that the user inputs, the plural noun that the user inputs, and the celebrity the user inputs. We're gonna create three variables. And these are basically going to be uh, character strings. So they're gonna be uh, collections of characters and we can store them in, uh, in a variable. So I'm gonna create some of these variables. Why don't we create one for color? And remember, whenever we create a uh, string or like a collection of characters, we need to make these open and closed square brackets. And what I also wanna do, because I'm not gonna be giving color a value right away, in other words, we're letting the user determine the value of color, I just need to tell C how many characters we want this string to be able to store. That way C knows how much memory it needs to allocate for this variable. So I'm just gonna say 20, and we'll basically just say they can enter in a color that is up to 20 characters. We're gonna do the same thing for plural noun. And again, we'll let them enter in 20 characters maximum. And finally, we're gonna do the same thing for celebrity. So again, 20 characters sounds good. All right, now that we have our variables created, I wanna actually get information from the user. So I wanna prompt the user for information and I wanna take the information that they entered in and I wanna store it inside of each one of these variables. First order of business is to prompt them for input. So I can just say print F and inside here we'll basically just type in enter a color. Once we've prompted them to enter the color, we can actually get whatever color they enter and store it inside of a variable. I'm gonna use a function called scanf, and over here I'm gonna accept a string. So I'm gonna accept a string of characters, and we're gonna store this inside of our color variable, just like that. And remember, if you watched the last tutorial, we used the uh, ampersand here when we were getting numbers, or also you'd do the same thing if you were getting a single character. But when we're getting input for a string of characters, we don't need that ampersand. So you can just get rid of that. Let's copy these and I'm gonna paste this two more times. So the second thing we wanna get from them is gonna be the plural noun. And I'm gonna store this inside of the plural noun variable. So you can see now we're getting the plural noun. And finally, we're gonna do the same thing for celebrity. And again, we're gonna get that celebrity. Okay, cool. 
So now I'm getting the color, I'm getting the plural noun, and I'm getting the celebrity. So the last thing we have to do is we have to take all of these variables and put them into our story, right? So we need to be able to print out the story with all of those variables. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to say percent %s and over here we'll pass in the color. Same thing here, I'm going to replace the plural noun here with a percent %s and we'll pass in the plural noun. And finally, same thing for celebrity down here. All right, so everything seems to be wired up and you'll notice that I have new lines here so that this story prints out on new lines. Let's go ahead and run this program and we'll see how we did. So over here, it's prompting us for a color. Why don't we enter in magenta? Enter a plural noun, let's do microwaves and enter a celebrity, why don't we just say Prince? So when I click enter, it's gonna say roses are magenta, microwaves are blue, I love Prince. So we were able to prompt the user to enter in all of that input, we took everything that they input, we stored it in variables, and then we printed all those variables out inside of our story and we have our Mad Lib. The program seems to be working really well. I do wanna show you guys one way that this program could mess up. So let's go ahead and run this again. So let's enter in a different color. I'm gonna enter in like blue, enter in a plural noun. So why don't we enter in phones and now enter in a celebrity. So I'm gonna show you guys one way that we could actually break this program. If I entered in a celebrity with a first and a last name like Tom Hanks, when I click enter now, you'll notice that instead of saying I love Tom Hanks, it's only saying I love Tom. Here's the problem. When we use that scanf function, scanf is only gonna grab characters up to the first white space. So essentially when we put this space here, we're telling C that we don't wanna grab anymore. But in reality, we wanna be able to grab the actor's full name. We wanna be able to grab the celebrity's first and last name if need be. So this is a situation in C where we would have to modify our little program. So what I could do is instead of just getting one variable like the celebrity, I could actually get two. So I could say over here like celebrity F and that'll stand for celebrity first name. And then down here we can make another variable called celebrity L that'll stand for last name. So now when we scan, instead of just scanning for one string of characters, I can scan for two strings of characters and we'll have celebrity F and then celebrity L. And down here, we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. So we can just say celebrity F and celebrity L. And we just need to add another percent here. So it's gonna say, I love celebrity's first name and celebrity's last name. So let's run, let's run our program and see how we did. So I can enter in like red and microphones. And now we can enter in Tom Hanks and we're printing out the actor's first and last name. So that's one way that we could remedy this program and make it be able to accept two inputs with a space in the middle. And that also just shows you guys a little bit more about how scanf works. So it's gonna stop scanning, it's gonna stop getting the input at that first space. Now, here's the thing about this program though. If I wanted to enter in a celebrity with uh, who only had one name, so if I only wanted to enter in one, the program actually isn't gonna be able to handle that. So if I said like hats, and down here if I said, like Gandhi, and I click enter, you'll notice that it's still waiting for me to enter in a last name, right? So I could enter in something here and then the program will work, but it was waiting for me after I entered in just that one name. So that's something that you're gonna have to, you know, play around with in your programs. Basically C is gonna force you to be very specific about what the user's entering. So if the user needs to enter two things, like two words, then you need to specify that. If the user is only gonna enter in one word, you have to specify that. So you have to be very specific when you're getting input from the user like that.